Midnight Stories for Rebel Girls. Hi, Rebels. This is Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, the interview. I'm your host, Jayla, and I'm talking to Jenny Hagel. Jenny read us the story of comedian Hannah Gadsby. Go listen if you haven't heard it yet. Hi, Jenny. Nice to meet you. Could you introduce yourself, please? My name is Jenny Hagel, and I'm a comedy writer and performer in New York City. That's so cool. And can you tell us a little about your childhood? I grew up in Virginia, and my fondest childhood memory is playing cards with my grandma. She was um, a really cool lady, and she had a really great sense of humor. So sometimes we would play cards for a really long time, and then she would be very dry. Like, she would tell a joke, and you kind of wouldn't realize it was a joke until she was done saying it, because it was like she had a very dry delivery. Um, And I also... um, really liked playing cards with her because she didn't let me win so I had to really try hard like sometimes grown-ups let kids win at games and she didn't do that so I knew if I won I had really earned it I love that and if you could go back in time what do you think you'd tell your younger self about how to make it as a comedian I think if I could talk to my younger self about being a woman in comedy I think one thing I think the first thing I would say is that Um, Comedy is all about just like hits and misses like so many other things in life. That in comedy, you don't have to worry about being funny every time. That it's a lot like um, when you go to a batting cage and you just take swings. Like even the best people in baseball, the best baseball players swing and miss sometimes, right? It's not about getting it right every time. It's about trying. So if you want to be good at comedy, you just keep trying and you don't worry about if it was funny every time. And so, and the way you get good is just to keep swinging. So I think I would tell myself that. Like, don't worry if you tell a joke or you write a joke and it's not perfect or it's not funny. Don't worry about that. That doesn't mean that you're not funny. It just means you just keep trying. Yes, that must be really challenging. Okay. And do you think it's different for women who go into comedy? I think there is a stereotype that some people have, not everybody, that some people have that girls are not as funny as boys or that adult women are not as funny as adult men. And I think the thing that I would tell myself is just to not worry about people who have that in their mind because you you really can't, at the end of the day, control what somebody else thinks of you. You can just worry about what you do, right? So instead of worrying about, does someone else think I'm funny? What you can worry about is what you do. Like if you if you want to be somebody who works in comedy, you can practice joke writing, right? Or you can read books about comedy. Or you can get together with friends and put on a comedy show. Those are things that you can control. I can't control if somebody has uh, negative or prejudiced thoughts about me. That's not a thing I can control. And honestly, I don't want to waste my time thinking about somebody who thinks like that. They're kind of a jerk. And I don't want to waste my time on jerks. So what I do spend my time on is finding other people, whether they're other women or men who I enjoy making comedy with who think like I think and who I enjoy spending time with and who I enjoy creatively, like we connect creatively and we like to do stuff together. And I sometimes spend time on my own. I still, even though I have a job in comedy, sometimes I just write things on my own that aren't for my job that I enjoy writing because those are things I can control. So I think that's what I would tell myself is not to worry about um, if other people think you can't do it. Just spend time on the things that you can control and don't, you know, like the things that you can't control, just kind of let them go. Is there a skill or talent you have that people might not know about? (laughs) If I have a bowl of popcorn and I throw a piece of popcorn in the air, there's like a 95% chance that I'm going to catch that piece of popcorn in my mouth. I'm like really good at it. I wish it was a sport at the Olympics. If they made that into a sport, you guys, I would be on that medal stand representing America, waving to everybody with a gold medal around my neck. I'm really good at catching popcorn in my mouth. You narrated the story of Hannah Gatsby. What do you think of Hannah? Hannah Gatsby's story resonated with me a lot um, because I am a comedian and I really identified with their journey in finding their voice, right? Because I think a lot of people tell jokes, but um, a big part of being a comedian is deciding how you want to tell jokes, right? Um, A big part of being any creative person is deciding... What's the way that you want to do it that fits you, right? Everybody who's an artist 
or a writer or a musician or any kind of creative person has to find what's the way that you want to express yourself in the world that fits who you are, right? That fits your personality and your gifts and your voice. And so I really responded with Hannah. I respond to the part of Hannah's story where they decide how they want to be a comedian and they find a way that works for them based on who they are in the world. And I thought that was really inspiring that they find a way to do it that's not based on how other people do it, but they find a way to do it that really fits them and who they are in the world. I thought that was really cool. And the other part of Hannah's story that I really responded to is, um, I know Hannah is queer and I'm queer, and um, it's um, only very recently in our um, history that people can be out in the world and um, be out in their jobs and be out in their lives. And um, I really admire that Hannah is so out and comfortable with who they are and stands up on a stage and and is very honest and open about who they are. It's really inspiring to me to see that um, it gives me courage in my daily life to be the same way and to live the same way. Um, And so um, I really was inspired by that part of their story also. And finally, Jenny, what makes you a rebel girl? Um... I think maybe what makes me a rebel girl is I do my best, whenever I have a choice to make about my life, I do my best to make the choice that's best for me. Not the choice that I think might impress people, like not the fanciest choice, or the choice that might impress somebody else, or even the choice that's necessarily expected of me. But I try to really think, what is the choice that's going to make me happiest? What's the choice that fits my personality best or my talents the best? So, like, at one point in my career, I had to make a choice about whether to move to New York or Los Angeles. And most people that I know in my my field, they move to Los Angeles. But I just kind of like New York better as a city. It fits me better as a person. I thought I'd be happier there. So I did that. And maybe that's a jo- maybe that's an example that's harder to connect with if, if you're listening to it and you're a kid. But I think that's, it's it's like, I just tried to make the choice that made me happiest, would make me happiest as a person. And um, you know what I mean? And maybe, I'm trying to think what a good example of that would be for a kid. If you're like listening to this and you're like in seventh grade and like what would be the equivalent of that? Maybe the example of that is like if you're in school and you're trying to decide whether to be on like a certain team or join a club and there's one that's full of cool kids, like they're popular at your school, but there's another one that's really actually the thing you're interested in. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's it's a matter of, like, at every juncture in your life, trying to make the choice that's really true to your heart versus the thing that might impress people or the thing that your parents expect of you or the people around you expect of you. I feel like if at every little crossroads in your life you try to just make the choice that's right for you, I feel like that's what I've tried to do, and it's, like, led me to a place that really, I feel like, fits me as a person. So, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's what makes me a rebel girl. But I feel like it's led me to have a life that I really enjoy. Um, And I feel really lucky about that. Thanks so much, Jenny. And thank you for listening. Until next time, stay rebel. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. This episode was produced and directed by Deborah Goldstein, with sound design and mixing by John Marshall Media. Script editing by Abby Schur. Joy Smith and Jess Wolf were our executive producers. Original theme music was composed and performed by Electra Bar Jockey. A special thanks to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Until next time, stay Rebel!